let me talk about a few things and I'm going to try to deliver the messages in the most delicate way that I can, okay? And just bear with me. If the first five minutes seems like it resonates with you, just please bear with me for the first five minutes. If it seems like it resonates with you, um, please watch the video because I feel like there are important things that are coming through that you need to be aware of. So I, I see a lot of warning signs and red flags. And uh, if it doesn't resonate, you know, then of course um, stop watching and, you know, you can find other uh, readers on YouTube. But I feel like there are some important messages that are coming through that you might need to hear in this reading. So if it pertains to you, please bear with me for the first five minutes and then move forward, okay? So first of all, what I see is uh, I see this man, he's gliding and he has these artificial wings on. And he's gliding over mountains, over trees, and I feel like he, he's some type of a self-proclaimed like superhero. And um, he's looking around for signs, looking around for people who might be in danger, or he's just scoping the landscape, you know, trying to find exciting things to look at. And then he hears like a help, 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 like a distress signals. He hones in and then he sees this woman. She's like a damsel in distress. She's stuck in this tiny little crevice on the side of the mountain. There's probably like um, probably two feet, two feet of space. So she's stuck there on this crevice and there's only two feet of space. And it's the side of the mountain. She doesn't know how to get down. She doesn't know. Um, there is no way for her to climb back up to the cliff. There's no way for her to climb down because it's it's a really, really uh, far drop. OK, and then he sees her. He's all like, OK, I'm going to go save you. Hang in there. He lands on the crevice, two feet crevice. And then he goes, OK, I'm here. I'm going to save you. And then he tries to, you know, get her away. And then he realizes I have these artificial wings. I need a little bit of a running start before I can take off and soar. But the crevice is only two feet wide. It doesn't give him enough room to run, to gain momentum and to get traction in order for him to especially, you know, uh, glide. Okay. And so we're in a little bit of a quandary here. So the scene kind of cuts out. <clears throat> So what I'm feeling happening here and, uh, you know, the, the later part of February, you're definitely in a very, very generous, self-giving uh, type of a mood, okay? We have here the Six of Pentacles. This is a card about generosity, wanting to help people, wanting to assist people, wanting to dish out advice, wanting to give um, financial assistance to others who might be in a less fortunate situation. I see this for a lot of fire signs. You guys want to right wrongs. You guys want to balance out injustices in the world. So I feel like this is a very magnanimous, uh, loving, selfless energy about you. And you do a lot for other people too. And I feel like, you know, going back to that image, it seems as if you're giving into a situation or you're trying to help somebody, but the magician in the reverse, you might not exactly know how to go about it the right way, or they're only giving you a piece of the story and they're not giving you the complete picture. Okay. So there are two things at work here. The first thing is that yes, you want to communicate and you want to be physically available to offer assistance in a situation. But in the process of offering assistance, in the process of giving that helping hand, like physically jumping in and helping somebody, you need to assess your surrounding, you need to assess your environment, and you need to make sure there is an exit strategy. Okay, so then what, what starts out as you going in to help this woman who's stuck on the side of the crevice of the mountain, uh, then you both become stuck. OK, so I feel like there is a situation here where we have to be a little bit more strategic. The magician, this is somebody who knows the ins and out of a situation. They've already mastered the situation when it's in the reverse position. I just feel like there are elements that you're not really uh, taking into account. There are factors that you haven't considered. And it's sort of like, you know, jumping first 
and then ask questions later, which might not be conducive to problem solving. When we problem solve, we have to know the ins and out, the beginning and the end. And we have to be able to look at a situation completely and thoroughly with full information in order for us to come up with the best and the most logical solution to that problem. So that's what I'm sensing here. And so the scene cuts, well, it, it weaves back in and it's like a nighttime scene and you know so they they've been he and the woman have been waiting there for a really long time it starts out in the daytime and then the moon comes out and they're both still on that crevice so he's scanning his environment and then he's realizing i'm not going to be able to use these wings and even if i have enough of a running start i'm not going to be able to hold her and maintain my balance in order for us to soar away or to you know land safely and so he takes off the the artificial wings he sets it down and he tells her we're gonna climb down this mountain there are trees we're gonna you know try our best to grab onto these branches and you know gradually make our way down to the base of the mountains and then he tells her uh, I'm going to give you these wings. You need to hold on to it for me. That way I can carry you or you can, you know, climb on my back and then I'll get us down safely. And she's so scared that she's just like, she's afraid of heights or she's just really traumatized and she's really scared. So she doesn't really budge. Okay. She's so, f she's just really scared. And so he's getting frustrated trying to tell her, like, you need to help me. You can climb on my back and then, you know, I'll get you down safely. Trust me, trust me, trust me. And then finally, she um, she she doesn't feel like she has a choice. And so she climbs on his back. And then it's it's like a really hard journey. It's a lot of work pulling his own weight, her weight and the wings in order for them to gradually climb down from one branch from one little crevice to the next and then finally they arrive at the base of the mountain and then she just kind of takes off she's she's so scared that you know she didn't realize oh thank you so much for helping me she just sort of takes off and then it, it cuts out again so what I'm feeling in this situation is you really need to examine your environment there is something here about looking at a situation very carefully before you jump in and there's an element as well um I, I feel like trauma you know trauma you're you might be dealing with somebody who has dealt with a lot of trauma they can't think correctly they can't tell you a story in a linear uh chronological you know order they can't really make sense of a situation so when you're interacting with them and communicating with them they're only telling you things that are most prominent but they're not really telling you telling you the beginning to the end and you're not really asking the right questions because you guys are very solution oriented you want to jump over the past and you want to okay we're here right now let's focus on the now let's find a solution but i feel like there are things that you have to unravel and make sense of and understand from the past so that you can have a more a more comprehensive solution to that situation does that make sense um what i'm feeling is i feel like for many of you you're trying to get around a situation like there is a, a blockage in front of you you're trying to get around it and for some of you law legal issues for others um, I'm seeing institution institutions like um, I'm seeing for 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 many of you like th this is the card that came through the Hierophant in the reverse position it's a situation where the structure is very very rigid but there are a lot of loopholes there are a lot of strategic maneuvering that you need to make in order for you to get around the situation. So if you were to kind of like attack it head on, you're not going to be able to gain traction. However, if you were to go back and look at the laws, look at the rules, look at the regulations, look at how things have been done in the past, look 
and study up. Okay, he's reading a book here, so I feel like studying up, researching, being able to figure out logically how one thing connects to the the other, so that you can have full information before you can take on this task. So I feel like on the one hand, you want to help another person, you want to help a situation, you want to make a situation better. But in the process of getting involved, you find yourself very like like pulled in, and you find yourself possibly emotionally swayed by another person, by their sob story, by the things that they're telling you, and and I feel like you're only hearing things from their perspective. And yes, you're very generous and you want to help, but this situation can land you in hot water. So you need to be very, very, very careful about other people's intentions, what they're telling you, and whether or not they're telling you information that is important, or they're telling you information that is very subjective because... Um, not because they're manipulative, I don't sense that, but because they are, they could be dealing with trauma and they could be giving you information that they think is important, but that doesn't really add to the fact finding that's necessary to arrive at a good solution. Does that make sense? Um... I'm going to give you an example because I have some things that are coming out, okay? So I feel like somebody is telling you the law says this, but I want you to do this. And there's some deviousness or there's some evasion of the law, okay? Either for financial gains or either to gain something, and in your mind, there are some red flags that are going off like, no, this is wrong because it's against the law. But I also feel like they're coming up with a very persuasive argument. And rather than focusing on the fact that, yes, it is against the law, they're focusing on the future, which is, yeah, but if you do this one thing, you're going to end up with all of these amazing opportunities and benefits and they hype up the story and you feel very drawn to it because it so the bottom line is we're focusing on the future if everything goes according to plan we're going to get all of these benefits however what if things don't go according to plan the future is all speculative and so i want you to be a little bit careful about dealing with people who speculate, dealing with people who paint you this beautiful, amazing story, and then you jump in, and then you find yourself very, very stuck. So this is something I feel can be avoided and should be avoided. So if you're still watching this, I hope that you take that into account. If you're dealing with people who are painting this rosy picture, and especially if they're not able to give you the, tr the the whole story or if they're not able to give you, you know, step-by-step -step instructions on how to do something, but they only focus on the benefits, they only focus on um, conjecturing or even speculating, this is what's going to happen, this is what we're going to get. So please be careful about that, okay, Aries? Um, so going back to the message, uh, the image that I saw, okay, and this woman, she's distressed. I feel like he spent the whole day, okay, he was stuck there, he found himself stuck. And, he, and, and then nightfall comes and then he was very much focused on the solution. And I feel like the important question that is relevant but that was not asked was, Hey lady, how'd you get on this side of the mountain? Did someone drop you here? Did someone retaliate? Did you do something bad? How did you find yourself on this tiny little crevice in the middle of nowhere on this mountain? I feel like that was a question that needed to be asked. How did you get yourself in this situation? Okay, and then the fact is that he helped her. He pulled her weight, he pulled his own weight, he helped her down the side of the mountain, and then she just takes off without a thank you, without, you know, that gratitude, without, like, um, and 
she might have taken his wings too. I believe she was holding on to his wings. And so he finds himself, you know, at the base of the mountain. And he's like, okay, what's going to happen to him? So I feel like you kind of need to really think about yourself a little bit more and think about like, what's going to happen to me at the end of this? What if things don't go according to plan? What if I have to make a detour? Is there a plan B? Are there ramifications? Are there, you know, pitfalls? Are there things that I can do differently to get the same results? So there are a lot of questions that I feel are not being asked. And there are a lot of things that I feel are not being planned accordingly. If you're dealing with a family situation, I feel like you guys, it might be a family environment. You want to jump in. You want to give your 100%. You want to offer financial assistance. You want to help the other do some, the other person do something. But I feel like their track record might not, uh, look at their track record. Look at their actions in the past. Don't look at the things that they're hoping to achieve. Look at what their, their track record says about their ability to follow through, their ability to be truthful and honest and to, you know, implement plans and to be self-sufficient and to do things on their own. Because I feel like some of you might be giving financial assistance to a person because they're like, oh, I've got this great business idea. I need, you know, uh, X amount of money. Can you loan me that money? Because... In the future, I'm going to make like, you know, 10 times more and then I'll pay you back as soon as it comes out. But they're not giving you a solid business proposal or even a business plan. How are they going to be able to practically um, execute their plan? Is it feasible? So really look at their track record. I don't see like there's anything bad. I feel like the person, their heart's in the right place. But I feel almost like they might not have been completely reliable in the past. Okay, so that's just something I want you to focus on. Okay, on the other hand, there is um, another person that I'm seeing over here. I have here the Princess of Wands. Princess of Wands is in the reverse position. And... Um, I'm not seeing this as like, you know, a specific sign, like a fire sign, or even we have here the King of Cups, a water sign. Um, what I'm seeing is I saw this image that popped out and it's like a cartoon animal, a cartoon creature. It's pink. It looks like a teddy bear, like a, or even like a, a cartoon, like a Japanese anime cartoon, um, even like a Pokemon. Um, but Either way, it's a, it looks like a pet, like a, a really cute animal. It's pink. It has like whiskers. It has ears. It has a fluffy tail. And it's really cute to look at. So it's in a home environment. And what I feel is um, it, you know, it stays home. You have to feed it. You have to give it water. It potentially eats your food. And it could, you know pee or poop on the rug and then you have to clean it up okay so I feel like there is somebody here that is kind of um, I, I feel like they might be taking advantage of a situation or they are creating a lot more work for you and they're not really pulling their weight they're not really pulling their weight Sure, they're, they're cute and cuddly and warm and comforting and their presence is great. But I feel like that animal, it just looks cute. It doesn't really do anything. It doesn't even have a function. It doesn't guard your house. It's just something that's cute or pretty to look at. It eats your food. It dirties or soils your house. You have to constantly give it attention. You have to walk it. You have to take care of it. And so the energy exchange, the give and take, is really not reciprocal. Um, I feel for some of you, you might be interested in a person and you're courting them. Like you're, you're you know, hardcore, like just full on showing them you're interested. <clears throat> you might be whining and dining the other person. I usually think of this as, you know 
the the romantic person, the the Casanova, the one that wines and dines others. Um, you're showing somebody that you're you know you're really interested in them. You're very attracted to them as well, and I almost feel like they're aware of it and they're kind of either milking it or they they have this sense of entitlement about them since you're you like me so much why don't you take care of me and I want you to be very very careful about that because I feel like for many of you you don't mind because that generosity card came out first you don't mind but I feel like it's it's just the law of karma Things have to be reciprocal. Give yourself to reciprocal relationship partners. Give your time and your energy to people that are deserving of it, to people that appreciate it, and to people that will reciprocate for you. Because as we progress through life, you will start to notice too that energy and time are very limited so we need to devote our energy and our time to people that deserve it and to people that we want to share that space with and who can reciprocate for us as we get older and I feel like for many of you you might be watching this who might be watching this you you guys are on the younger age spectrum but as you get older and this is what I've noticed too um, you know, the demands of work, the demands of friends, the demands of family, parents, aging parents, um, work, trying to get ahead in your work environment. You're being pulled. You're going to start to feel like you're being pulled in multiple, multiple directions. And you don't have a lot of your time to give. And you're going to find that you don't have a lot of energy to give to others. And so it's really good practice to start at a young age to learn to say no, to draw boundaries and to not let other people take care of you or I'm sorry, not let other people. Yeah. So not let other people take care of you, learn to be self-sufficient, but also not let other people take advantage of you. OK. And then for some of you, too, this could be your energy, the queen of one. I'm sorry, the, the page of ones. And there's somebody who's very, very, very much interested in you. They're, they're like really attracted to you, really, really interested in you. They either want to take care of you like, you know, um, I, I feel like um, somebody that wants to give you money so that you can date them. I, I feel that. Somebody who is potentially a lot older and they want to have something with you where they take care of you and it's like yes it's all great and good but we have to learn to be self-sufficient and we have to learn that relationships need to always be reciprocal i feel for some of you you might have gotten out of a relationship that was uh, quite tumultuous okay uh, like a breakup of a situation where you might have been married and you're separated. You might have been married and you're divorced. Or you might have lived with somebody that you had a very significant relationship with. And you have gone, you've given a lot of yourself. And the other person just, um, there wasn't that sense of reciprocity. And you're a little bit jaded. And you're meeting somebody new who adores you absolutely adores you we have a potential water sign Pisces Cancer Scorpio and I almost feel like I don't I, I feel like you might not love them 100% but you've been jaded so you're just like I'm, I'm gonna go with this relationship because this person loves me more than I love them and as a result of it they're never gonna leave me because they love me more than I love them and so there you, you feel like there is a safety and security in that differential between who loves who more if they love me more they're not gonna leave me and so you you stay in it even though your heart is not 100% complete in that union does that make sense? Um, I feel there is an apology 
with a person from your past. They're coming to you and they're offering you an apology. This has been long awaited. This has been years in the making. This person seems to me to be very, very stubborn. Their energy, the magician in the reverse. And I feel like there was a lot of love caught up with this person. And I feel like they're finally seeing the forest for the trees. And they're going to give you that apology. Okay. I hope the reading is helpful for you, uh, Aries. And um, if you have, you know, watch it the entire video to this point. I feel like you have to be good to yourself. You have to know your worth. You have to understand that things need to be reciprocal. That is the karmic way of the universe. That is what we're supposed to do. It's our obligation to one another. Have an equal exchange of energy in all of our social relationships, love relationships, family relationships. Because when things are lopsided and wobbly, there's always going to be, you know, that day of reckoning when these imbalances need to be restored. And it can be a little bit, it's going to be usually a painful adjustment to restore these energetic imbalances, okay? Um, your day of reckoning here is coming because we have here the judgment card, communication, contact. And we have this situation here. Somebody, this is the Knight of Pentacles. And I feel like somebody is coming in because they want to offer an apology. And I feel like you've had a, a really long but also painful history with this person, Three of Swords. And they are aware of their actions in the past. And I feel like, you know, with every type of an interaction, it requires, like, it takes two to tangle, right? They're aware that they made some mistakes. They're aware of their actions. They're aware of how the things they did and the things they say affected you. And so I feel like you you have a long-awaited apology that's coming through. Um, I hope this reading is helpful.